Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling in Dash for the 3rd of March. So glad to have you along as we look at Numbers chapter 32 and 33 and also Mark in the New Testament chapter 10. I'm calling this one act of faith and we'll explain that in a moment. But dear, would you open us with prayer? Sure. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the many blessings that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word so we can read about you. And thank you for teaching us through your word. Lord, please let our words help to encourage others in their walk with you. Amen. And a special shout out to Haresh and his small group in India that are doing life journaling. That's interesting that they are a day ahead, just like the people in Japan are a day ahead versus us. And then you can even go further to the people in Florida that are even behind. So. But they're the same day, unless it's same midnight. Day. Yeah. So it's just... Another example of God being all over the world and, uh, you know, his brothers and sisters searching after a closer relationship through life journaling. And we do this to make the most of our dash. Today, I'm talking about Mark chapter 10, verses 52, and it's go. Go? Well, it's called act of faith, but it starts with Jesus saying, go, your faith has healed you. And immediately the man received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Go. And my observation is we use scripture, observation, application, and prayer, or so every day. A blind man asked Jesus to heal his eyes so he can see. And Jim, simply Jesus says, go. And the man's faith healed him. Ah, it's the man's faith that healed him. My application, how will that be made differently by what I've read today? Well, I'm reminded that our own faith is powerful and all it takes is the faith of a mustard seed. It says this in the Bible. These acts of healing may seem unreal, but as we pray and see people healed again and again in our own lives, they become examples of active faith. And I'm encouraged to keep asking for healing and miracles, even if they seem unnatural or impossible to other people. I have seen way too many things happen in my lifetime, miracles and too many things I just cannot believe that it's not possible that it's ended it's just it's there's too many of them too many examples and when you first start with God you have a new relationship and you're not used to seeing those kinds of things but after time as you continue to grow your faith and you're going to see more of those things so keep asking and he continues to do miracles that he being God my prayer, Lord, help us to have an act of faith and not to sit back and, to, and not to just let life happen, but for us to again have an act of faith and to grow in our faith. Amen. You know, it's really interesting that you journaled about that because today I was reading a, a few texts that were sent out to me and also in Facebook. And uh, one, we have a friend whose father was very ill and we did not know if he was going to make it. He had cancer and he's in the ICU. Yeah. And which is the intensive care unit of cancer hospital. Cancer or COVID? He had both. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, but we were like, we're going to pray for him because the Lord's will be done, but we're going to pray for a miracle. And he's doing much better now. He's There's some other friends in Texas that um, we prayed. The woman had stage four cancer. And this is going back two years ago and it all went away and stage four and then gone so that was the answer to prayer now going forward it's been two years since we began praying it has come back so we'll continue to to pray for that person but we know that even though it seems unnatural to the rest of the world that miracles can still happen and they do happen just last week there were some people that were praying for a person who had diabetes and hadn't really felt the feeling of her toes in a long time. And it had to do with the circulation of blood. And um, she asked for healing and people were praying and she got a tingling feeling in her in her toes. And so that's the start. Yep, a lot of miracles are happening. Um, I want to say this before I begin. I kind of went out on a tangent on my today. What's a tangent? I- Because we have people listening all over the world. I kind of, got stuck on something 
but this is kind of what I'm going through right now. So instead of redoing it, I just wanted to share what's happening right now in my life. That's kind of like uh, going down a rabbit hole. Yeah, well. It takes you away from the main purpose of you going through the field if you go into the rabbit hole. And, and that's what it's meant. You are side. Sidetrack. Sidetrack. Start talking means about. Means you some... didn't take the main train track. You took a side one, which took you longer. It was a detour. And I tried to bring it back, but I'm not for sure if I got back on that track. So I started off with Mark 10 verses 43 through 45. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave to all. For even the Son of Man did not come. Oh, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Well, my observation is that in this story, James and John asked Jesus if they could sit by him, one on the left and one on the right, in his kingdom. It's important to understand their requests. They basically asked Jesus if they could have the place of honor in his kingdom. Ironically, Jesus had just addressed this request earlier in yesterday's reading. Jesus told them that the path to being important was to be humble. By asking if they could sit in these prominent places in Jesus' kingdom, that was not being very humble. And here's my going off detouring. How can I apply this, uh, what I read today, to my life? Sometimes, or should I say many times, I blurt things out or think certain things that I do not realize the significance of what I'm saying. For example, when I think, I am sick and tired of this renovation. Our contractor, who will remain nameless, could be removing his tools, junk, crap, from our spare bedroom that we cannot even walk into because of his stuff, or putting up walls in the bathroom in preparation for the shower, or spraying the ceiling so we can remove the brown paper from our floor. Now all of these things are true. However, I have to, I, however, have I said this to the contractor that I'm sick and tired of it, or am I just complaining? I have to be honest and say that my patience is almost gone with this renovation that started October the 6th, 2022. I'm tired of being without a shower in my home since January the 13th, when I moved back into my unfinished condo. So how do I apply what I read to my life? First, I believe it's okay to voice my frustrations to God. Second, I need to voice my frustrations to our contractor. And third, I need to pray for salvation for our contractor and for him to accept the Lord so he can spend eternity with God. Perhaps my lesson to learn is when I think about the lack of progress in this renovation, I need to pray for the contractor instead of just focusing on the mess and the lack of work being done. My prayer. Lord, as I began to write my application, I realized that my energy and patience for this renovation is on its last fumes. I kind of veered away from being careful of my words and mindful of how my words might sound to others. I'm asking that you help me with my perspective on this renovation because I am really exhausted from the lack of work. I need your Holy Spirit to help me reframe my thoughts to your kingdom. Amen. So a couple of things, and I'll try to squeeze them in here. Um, what you don't know is I've been witnessing to our contractor and told him about a men's retreat that I'm helping to host in April, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Contact me if you want more details here on Oahu. But I told him about it, told him he needed to register, and he said he was in, and he's going to attend. So that is what we've been praying for, that yes. he would have that relationship. Because he kind of, he says, oh, I know who Jesus is. But we're saying, no, no, no. Let's go to the next level. And I told him, hey, let's go to the next level. He says, yeah, I need to do that. This is crazy. I'll remind people about what it says in James 3, verses 4, 5, and 6. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. And in verse 5, in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny smirk and it can set a forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is the flame of fire. It is the whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. And it can see 
your whole life being burned down in flames. And why are you sharing this? Because our tongues, if we don't watch it, and I've had to watch mine for a, a number of months. Please delete this video. Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. No. Okay. Why? This is unrehearsed. Why? Well, I thought you said that because you were upset by what I read, said. No. I'm just saying, Lord, help me. I'm having a hard time. Yeah, and you should have um, had an explosion months ago. It's been a miracle upon miracle that we've been able to uh, live without a shower for a month. We do shower. We <laughs> We do shower at the gym, which is across the street. Well, and it's a half a mile away. For those watching the video, I just flex the muscle because I've been going to the gym. So you can shower, well, lift weights and then shower. Yeah. But go ahead. But no, I'm just saying, um, I, I'm amazed by what we've gone through and it's bearing some fruit. Thank you, Lord. So, um, no, we don't need to edit this video. That would take extra time <laughs> to not record it. We're just real with you people. Thank you for watching and thank you for, you know, being a part of the Life Journaling and Dash journey. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at Numbers chapter 34, 35, and 36. Also, we'll go on to Mark 11, but that's tomorrow. It's 3,471. I don't know what 3,471 is. Words on your document? I have no idea. Would you like I, to go ahead and close this out with prayer? Lord, thank you for Siri. I have no idea what she just told us. But anyhow, that doesn't matter. Thank you, Lord, for um, being with us and holding us. You know, it reminds me of the footprints in the sand that when I only see one set of uh, prints, that's you holding me and that you are walking there. So thank you for being with us, even though we don't, we don't feel it or see it. We know that you're there, so we thank you, Lord, for having our backs. Amen.